None of the other treatments worked. Nurse, bring me a scalpel. It's time to cut out this disease once and for all. Welcome back to Ramen Board. Let's learn how to play a game. Today, we're going back to basics with the game that ushered in the modern cooperative game Micro Renaissance, Pandemic. This is the breakout game for designer Matt Leacock, who also designed Forbidden Island, Forbidden Desert, and contributed to the fantastic Pandemic legacy. In Pandemic, you and your friends are working desperately to save the world from four terrible diseases. The origins, names, and horrible symptoms of these diseases are left ambiguous. I'm sure you have your own opinions, but if you ask me, two of these diseases were caused by McDonald's. One of them was accidentally released by the Center for Disease Control, and the last one is actually not a real disease. It's sort of a placebo disease caused by the fear-mongering mainstream media. <laughs> Silly humans. You and your fellow players will work together as a crack team of CDC employees. Medics, scientific researchers, people who know how to use radios. You get the idea. Your goal, whether or not you choose to accept it, is to find a cure for all four of these diseases before humanity is destroyed. Travel the world, stall for time by trying to contain the epidemics, and cooperate with your fellow players to discover the cures. There are a whole host of ways to lose this game, which we'll talk about later. Don't let any of them happen to you, or you'll be personally responsible for the extinction of the human race. No pressure. Put on your gas mask. Put out the board. Set out the four colors of disease cubes, the cure markers, and the pile of research stations near the board. Put one research station in Atlanta, home of the CDC. Put the outbreak marker on the first space of the outbreak track, and the infection marker on the first space of the infection rate track. Now the diseases start rampaging, and you start feeling the monumental weight of the task ahead of you. The infection deck contains one card corresponding to each city on the map. Shuffle the infection deck, and flip over the top three cards and put three of the proper color disease cubes on each of those cities. Flip over three more cards and add two disease cubes to each of these cities. And finally, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, flip over three more cards and add one disease cube to each of those cities. Put those nine cards you just flipped in the discard pile. Randomly assign each player a character. Each player takes that character card and a reference card and puts their color pawn on Atlanta to start. The player deck contains multi-purpose city cards, one for each city on the map, which will be used for moving, building research stations, and researching diseases. It also contains powerful event cards, which may just save your bacon. Sadly, the player deck also contains epidemic cards, which increase the rate of global infection. Set aside the epidemic cards, Shuffle the rest of the player cards and hand out two starting cards to each player. Now split the player deck into five piles, shuffle an epidemic card into each pile, and stack them together to form the player deck. Choose someone to go first, and you're ready to start. Note that we just set up for four players on normal difficulty. The game has slightly different setup instructions for different numbers of players and difficulties, so make sure to check your rules. Wash your hands before returning to work. On your turn, you'll have four actions to do as much good as you can, then you'll restock your supplies, and finally you'll flip over some infection cards, which will wreck your shit. You have a whole bunch of choices for what to do with your actions, so choose wisely. First, you'll probably want to get the hell out of Atlanta. Here's how to do that. Most obviously, you can follow a connection to move from one city to another. Train, bus, boat, you name it. Think low-cost, low-speed, moderately reliable transportation. The CDC is a government agency, after all. It doesn't have all the money in the world to send you wherever you want to go on a private jet. Though you'd really think Congress would be able to allocate some extra funds. This is an emergency, after all. Oh, wait. It's Congress. I forgot. Half of them aren't even acknowledging this state of emergency, and the other half are busy trying to get Mexico to pay for it. Alternatively, you can discard a city card to move to that city from anywhere on the map. Yeah, that's right. If you want to move fast in this game, you need to pay for it yourself. Or you can move by discarding the city card of the city you're in to move anywhere else on the map. Again, wouldn't it be nice if the CDC paid for this instead of you having to pay out of your own pocket? You still got student loans to pay off for crying out loud. Finally, if you're at a research station, you can move to another research station. At least they do have that. So, you got to where you were trying to go. 
What do you do now? One of these other actions I was about to tell you about. Hold on to your britches. You can build a research station at the city you're currently in by discarding its city card. Because, you know, you're qualified to build a high-tech research station at a moment's notice. Actually, that degree in rapid construction does come in handy. Also, the nanomachines. You can treat a disease, removing one disease cube from a city you're in. Burn it with fire. Then, burn the fire with fire, and really, really hope that the disease hasn't evolved the flame retardant trait. If you're in a city with another player, you can either give that city's card to that player, or take that city's card from that player. As they always told me in CDC Kindergarten, sharing is curing. While at a research station, you can discard five city cards of the same color to discover a cure for that color of disease. To signify that you've cured it, put that disease's cure token in the designated slot. Congratulations! You're now one step closer to winning the game, and dealing with that disease just got easier. From here on out, whenever you use the treat disease action on that disease, you remove all of its cubes from the city instead of just one. Discovering a cure also enables you to eradicate that disease, which happens when you've removed all of that disease's cubes from the board. If you manage to eradicate a disease, flip over the cure token. From now on, anytime you would place a cube from this disease, don't do it. During your action phase, you or other players may want to play event cards, such as the airlift event. These powerful cards can be played at any time for free. Do what they say when you play them. In stark contrast to all the other games where you don't do what the cards say when you play them. Once you're done with your four actions, it's time to resupply. Draw two more cards from the player deck and put them into your hand. If you draw any epidemic cards, don't put those in your hand. Instead, resolve them. Feel free to cry as you follow these steps, unless the disease is spread through tears, in which case hold it in, goddammit! Move the infection marker forward one space. Draw the bottom card from the infection deck, and immediately put three disease cubes on that city. Discard that card. Shuffle the infection discard pile, and put it back on top of the deck. That's right. Those places that are already struggling with disease? They're coming up again real soon. You have a hand limit of seven cards. So if you have more than seven cards at any time, you need to discard cards or play event cards to get back down to seven. Remember, you can play event cards at any time for free, even when it's not your turn. Finally, Infect cities. Check the infection marker to see the current infection rate. Draw that many cards from the top of the infection deck, add one disease cube to each of those cities, and discard those cards. That's it for your turn. Next player. Outbreak Dance. Whenever a city has three disease cubes of a color, and you attempt to add another disease cube of that color, an outbreak occurs instead. The disease spreads to all neighboring cities. Add one disease cube to each connected city. Also move the outbreak marker up by one to record your sadness. And have a moment of silence for the rapidly declining state of humanity. But don't waste too much time. Humanity is on the brink of total annihilation. Get your butt in gear! An outbreak can cause a chain reaction of outbreaks as it spreads. Resolve all such outbreaks one by one. Once a city has had one outbreak from this infection card, that's quite enough. It can't outbreak again until the next infection card. Outbreaks can also cause multiple diseases to cohabitate in the same city. This is allowed, but it does kind of suck for those cities' inhabitants. Disease and you. There's not one, not two, but three different ways to lose this game. On the eighth outbreak, the world enters an uncontrollable state of chaos. You lose. If you run out of cards in the player deck, and a player can't draw their two player cards, you were too slow, and the diseases have mutated out of control you lose. Or, if you need to place a disease cube and there aren't any more in the supply, one disease has become far too prevalent, and there's no longer any hope of getting it under control. You lose. You win if you manage to dodge all three of these loss conditions, and you've managed to research cures for all four diseases. You don't need to eradicate the diseases, just discover the cures. It's not your job to finish the cleanup, leave that to the interns. If you do discover all four cures, I think a drink is in order. One with a high enough alcohol content to help sterilize any residual contaminants in your body. The CDC's org chart. Let's meet our heroes! The Dispatcher is literally the hand of God, moving the other peons as he sees fit. For an action, the Dispatcher may move another pawn, or teleport any pawn to any other pawn. The Medic is not very proficient at helping your team win, but is very good at keeping your team from losing. His treat disease action is superpowered, removing all traces of the disease from that city instead of one puny cube. And once a disease has been cured, 
He can wander around like a diseased Roomba, sucking away all traces of that disease just by being in the city. The researcher can give away any card to another player in her city, instead of following the normal card must match city rule. Independently wealthy, she actually still has access to all of those scientific publications, unlike the rest of you. The scientist only needs to discard four cards of a matching color to find a cure. Science! It works, bitches! The operations expert has a hard-on for architecture. As an action, he may build a research station in his city. Or, if he's at a research station, he can discard any city card to fly anywhere on the map. Whee! The contingency planner is always ready with a backup plan. You'd think he'd just help the rest of you come up with a good plan to begin with, but no, he likes to watch everybody else flounder first. Kinda has a savior complex. As an action, he may rescue an already used event card, giving it a chance to be played again. The quarantine specialist prevents all new disease cubes and all outbreaks from occurring in her city and all connected cities. She used to work at Area 51, so she definitely knows how to lock things down. Pandemic also has several expansions you can add on, so you'll never have to lose in the same way twice. And if you're really a pandemic fiend, have a consistent gaming group, and are looking for something a bit more epic, we strongly, strongly recommend Pandemic Legacy. It's Pandemic with a twist. Each time you play, you irreversibly alter the game world and progress an overarching story. Plus, you get to permanently destroy game pieces. And there are stickers! So that's Pandemic. One morning, Earth awakens to discover that all pants have disappeared. Shorts 2. Chaos ensues. So that's Fancy Brick. The game where you're just a brick, but you've gotten a chance to go to the Prince's Ball. Make it home by midnight, or you'll turn into a pumpkin. So that's a Netflix. Just one. So that's Pandemic, a great game for your germophobic friends. Stay tuned to watch us get Erlenmeyered playing this with alcohol, but don't forget to like this channel if you have the sniffles, subscribe to us if you have an itch, and if you're feeling particularly viral, why not share this video around? I'll see you next time, but until then, play responsibly. Oh, it's so beautiful! Your is so bloody. Meryl! Oh, I've made a mark. <laughs> <laughs>